Look at this. Wagyu in 3D. Uh, is it worth it? We'll take a look. Uh, it's the ribeye challenge this time. Wagyu from Costco Prime versus a Japanese Wagyu and also a American Wagyu. Stick around. We'll take a deep dive right now. Hey there, it is Bill West with BarbecueTricks.com. About a year ago, I did a comparison video. Uh, I called it Wagyu, is it worth it? And I compared a brisket from, it was actually Snake River Farms to a Costco brisket. And I got a lot of feedback, a lot of, I, it's hard for me to like read through the comments just because it was kind of painful for me. I felt like I did a really good kind of comparison what I was thinking in the review was, okay, we've got a, actually chose a choice brisket uh, from, Sam, or not Sam's Club, from Costco, and I got a brisket American Wagyu from, anyway, I talk all about it in the video, American Wagyu from Snake River Farms, and uh, a lot of people thought that was an unfair com comparison because I did choice compared to Wagyu, and it was American Wagyu, and so it was a balancing act. Anyway, I think that video stands, I tried to be fair with it and, and stands alone. Um, you can see my results there. But to kind of revisit this, I thought I'd do it with um, some beautiful Wagyu steaks. This one actually a boneless ribeye Japanese uh, from my friends at Meat and Bone. And I actually spent a lot of time talking to um, Gabriel and uh, Louis Mata from uh, the CEO for Meat and Bone about you know whether the Wagyu gratings are worth it and, uh, and and interesting different responses to all of it. I'm going to season these up with just a real simple. Actually, I'm going to use uh, Saskatchewan seasoning, um, and we'll do a side by side comparison. But just looking at these in the packaging, you can see already. Um, there is definitely a difference with Wagyu. I didn't see it with the briskets I've done before, but here, and especially when you start talking about Japanese Wagyu, uh, for sure, no doubt, there is a visual difference. And I didn't see that in the, in the video before. And I asked Lewis, um, does it really matter? And, and he said, it kind of depends on the cuts. This is what he said. It does and it doesn't. Like for example, Prime, it's still Prime. Anything Prime is going to be high quality. The difference is like the beef grading is only looking for the most part at the maturity of the cow. There's a few things it'll look at, but mostly maturity and it's going to look at the marble. But that doesn't tell the whole story. Um, so the USDA goes as, up a, a, as, as far as prime and that's it. And they'll look at these two factors. When you look at other countries like Australia and Japan, they do a similar, but with a lot more detail. But at the end of the day, what I've discovered is what matters is um, the details. The devil is in the details. The difference between a $50 cowboy steak prime and a $40 cowboy steak prime, it may be how that cat was fed and how it was treated and how it was cut. Was it butchered? Is it butchered? Did this, was, is the steak trimmed and cut by hand? Is it wet aged? One thing that people don't realize is that every single piece of beef that you've had has been aged. It's been aged at least seven days. So whether, if you age four days and you, or you age 20 or 30 days, and I'm talking wet aging, you're gonna have a completely different experience. One's going to be a lot more tender than the other. And that adds cost. Um, so yeah, the labeling is a little bit, I would say it's a good start to look at, but there's also a sweet spot on some steaks that are choice that can be almost as good as a prime and then you're saving the premium. Um, on the flip side, there's some cuts where it's worth going for the prime and there's some cuts where it isn't. So every single grade of beef in the world, be it Australian, American, or, 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 or Japanese, you're judging the whole steer by the ribeye. That doesn't necessarily translate as well to the rest of the animal. So that's where it makes a difference to, to know the details, know where. In, is, is that the case in, in US? It's basically judged by the ribeye? Yeah, everywhere. We're all looking at the ribeye when it comes to grating beef. So let's get these going. We've got ribeyes and they look good. I tried to get the same thickness. Boy, look at that thing. That's one. And then we've got these beauties 
for meat and bone. It'll start with, this one here is a boneless ribeye, BMS level 6 to, to 7. So this would be considered an American um, breed Angus mix. And I believe what Lewis says is these are, uh, they, they recommend this is like the best buy for your money and you get a great steak. So six or seven BMS with that. And then here's a beautiful one, a BMS 8-9, which is really getting up there from meat and bone. And unlike when I did the briskets before, you couldn't see as much of a difference when I compared, and I was surprised, the American Wagyu brisket to the uh, Costco, it was Costco choice, I really thought you would, but I think it goes to show you that the Costco was really pretty good, but so look at this, one more level up, this is the, the different levels, and as you can see here, there's a big difference. Like the Miyazaki is, is insane. Like literally, it's almost more fat than beef. It's super rich. You look at the steak and you say, oh, I would eat that in a heartbeat. And then when you're halfway through it, you're like, wow, why is this so filling? And it is because how rich it is. The BMS 8-9 to me is one of the most spectacular ribeyes I've ever had. It's actually that mix between a beefy, extremely tender, extremely flavorful steak. Um, which approaches the richness of the Miyazaki, but it doesn't quite get there. So to me, that's, that's perfect. Um, the 6.7 is a good, high-grade American Wagyu uh, ribeye, which is a great price value, um, and it's, it's, it's got a good flavor. So here they are, all seasoned up. Let's pop them on the grill. I'm gonna go hot and fast, just cook them for a couple minutes each side and see how they taste. So yeah, the Japanese A5 Wagyu is a BMS 9 plus. It's like the best of the best. So good. It did melt in your mouth. Um, it's like butter, beefy butter. They all had a great beef flavor and I seasoned them all the exact same. Even the Costco tasted good, but it's all in the level of succulents, I would say. And uh, I'll try and show you these in order and I'll cut here the Wagyu A5 Japanese BMS 9 Plus and BMS is the Beef Marbling Score and Meat and Bone has this all mapped out on their website nice and clear. When I cut this you're gonna see it's a, it's actually looks maybe more white than it is. It's truly nice and medium rare but it almost looks white because of all the fat it has in here. And again, no doubt, the Japanese Wagyu was as succulent as you can get. But let's look at these other ones too. So here's all of them on one cutting board. You've got the, the Japanese on the left. On the very top, you've got the BMS 8 to 9 beef marbling score, which is the one, that's the one to get. It's the best, best you can get closest to. It is still a, an Angus Wagyu mixed. And then on the top right of your screen, my left hand, is the Wagyu BMS 6 to 7, which was, they say the best for the money. Best, and I would agree. And it is one notch better than the Costco, which is a simple prime. Which, again, Costco was fine. There you have it. So there you go. That is exactly what we're dealing with. I would say they, uh, meat and bone, thank you. These steaks are incredible, and even Costco's Prime is good, but you can definitely see Wagyu is worth it when it gets to these higher levels, especially the Japanese. You can definitely see the difference. I mean, it's just pretty incredible. I'm, it's translucent here. I can see light coming through. I don't know if you can the, the other way around, but um, this Japanese is unbelievable. I was talking to Greg over at Ballistic Barbecue, and I agree. 
you take a bite, there's something about this that almost just every bite makes you smile or something. It's that good. Japanese Wagyu, thank you, meat and bone. Uh, Gabriel, Lewis, is Wagyu worth it when it comes to ribeyes? Absolutely, and there's so many different levels. Find out more about Meat and Bone. I put a link to their website in the description box here, and uh, more on different meat you can get through them, and the brisket video as well. Uh, for more tips, tricks, other fun stuff, anytime, just check it out at www.barbecuetricks.com.